Welcome back, everybody. Second best of three of the day. We're here in the semifinals, which means bounties can be claimed. We'll talk about bounties in a moment. We got some housekeeping to go through. So Infernal Shrines, map number one. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. There it is. Okay, so Infernal Shrines is map number one. We had the members of Adventure Scripted by Hopaka, or Ash, banning out the Battlefield and Sky Temple. The crew of Crankles will be banning away Special, which is technically three maps, as I mentioned. Gar uh, Haunted Mines, Warhead Junction, and Blackheart's Bay, as well as Garden Terror, Garden of Terror. Infernal Shrines will be the first map chosen by, I believe, Adventure, no, uh, by Crankle Crew, and first pick goes over the side of Adventure, scripted by Hopaka. As we do have our bands, of course, as always, this is the tournament style where heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps in this best of three semifinal matchup. No tournament baseline bans. As I mentioned, there's bounties, so picking and playing specific heroes or specific compositions or specific heroes with specific talents can get you bounties. There's a bunch that have been claimed. If we do see a bounty, I will mention it to all of you. Otherwise, we'll just uh, chill. If you'd like to look at the full list, you can use exclamation bracket. There's a little uh, drop down uh, on the main event page that has all the heroes. And I believe there's also a drop down for all the bounties that have currently been claimed. Not counting, of course, today's, because this is where we could start seeing some other ones. Uh, bounties can be claimed by all teams, so everyone could do the Chogol bounty, but you can only do it once. I believe that covers all of our housekeeping. Of course, if you're having fun here on Twitch, be sure to follow. We got a giveaway going on right now. Subscribers get double luck, so exclamation giveaway, uh, to get yourself all the information and the product available from Corsair. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, subscribe here on Twitch. I think I covered everything. Oh, if you have Prime Gaming, use that here as well. Get yourself some uh, some emotes and, and some ad-free viewing and, and push your sub gulp and you support the good boy bandit. We got a Mayeb Jahan on the right hand side. Blaze will be first picked for the crew, for our blue crew. Uh, so Inferno Shrines, both teams needing a bit more shrine clear. Wave clear is not bad from Blaze, but of course that's only in the solo lane. Wave clear in the core four is not the best for Crankle crew, but uh, either team could look for an Asmodan if they have not done the Asmodan Bounty, this is one of the maps that he's not too bad on. Uh, we did see Kalefoss with Convection done on this map as well by Exodia Stack, which we'll be seeing up next in a different semifinal matchup. Of course, the winner of this series goes on to the Grand Finals. That'll be our final series of the day. It's a best of five, but a Blaze Diablo Brightwing on the left hand. All right. Oh, I forgot to get T. I was busy talking about random stuff. I forgot to get T. God dang it. All right, well, we'll be fine. I'm just gonna be thirsty. This, this, Watch this be a 40 minute Infernal Shrines game. Just watch it, watch it. That's 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 always what happens when you're like, oh, I can just make it through it. No big deal. 40 minute game incoming. Tracer removed, okay. Uh, could go for an Anduin ban. Because Maev with uh, Light Bomb is not too bad. Johanna, Bless Shield, and Light Bomb's not too bad. Leap of Fates to pull people away from Diablo Collapse. Hey, I like the idea of an Anduin ban here, realistically. Gonna get rid of Leork instead. Don't want to deal with him in the solo lane. Don't want to deal with his in tombs. Okay. So, uh, there was a early Hanzo ban. That's a target onto, onto our left side uh, Bish player. What do we got going on on the right here? Old man Deckard Kane. So some shapes to be made. Tychus picked up as well. I like the Tychus here. Uh, shred through the Diablo health bar. Force bunker out from Blaze. Yeah, I do. I do like this quite a bit. Odin's good siege and counter siege tool. I doubt we see Draken Laser Drill, but this is a map where that that can be utilized here and there around the shrines, even for siege potential as well. Oh, ba -bum -bum -bum. What do we got going on here on the left? The wait is over. Probius is a bounty! Exclamation Probius. And then copy that and then and then donate 69 bits with that as the as with that as your uh, text message. Who doesn't want to listen to the Probius? Who doesn't want to listen to TTS read off the Probius uh <laughs> <laughs> Copy pasta. Uh, last pick on the right hand side, gonna need a solo laner into the blaze. Maybe a Sonya. Okay, they'll go Urel. I like the Urel here. Gives you, gives you some nice control with the 
Righteous Hammer pushing people back. Self cleanses, all that good stuff. All right, uh, let's go ahead and start up a prediction. Mr. Bandit, what do you think? He thinks he's got tasty paws, I think. A lot of things in every WoW expansion are released at a later date anyways. Raids, for example, continue to be added throughout the expansion as the story unfolds. Oh, thank you, Zig. I'm learning a lot today. Torch prediction, ready to go. First best, or excuse me, first map in this best of three series here in the semifinals. As I mentioned, Probius is a bounty. We'll see if Holpaka can uh, win this bounty for his uh, friends of adventure scripted by him. Deviant for the side of Crankle Crew, playing your Deckard Kane. We have got a uh, Sven Maev bounty. Wow. Uh, we've got a Crankle, Johanna, Porky, Yorel. Marl Kark's going to be playing the Tychus and Sven with the Maev. I kept wanting to say Taranda there because it was a very close model. I mean, Taranda on a Tiger. But left hand side. Left hand side, we're going to be looking at Adventure Scripted by Hopaka. My playing the Blaze. Hopaka on the Probius. Bish will be your Diablo. Ren, Brightwing. And we'll see Down for Live on your Cassia. Which is, uh, in the past, you may have known them as Mariel. Mariel? Maybe? Uh, I love interesting facts. By all means, throw them in chat. See hyper shift for Brightwing still. We got the Thunderstroke for Cassia. Grenades out from Tychus with the quarterback. I'm also gonna be seeing the Sapphire increasing the Decker Kane slow. Up to 65% when applied. Good boy bandit. Yeah. Adrenaline stim pack, and we'll also be seeing the uh pulse resonance. Echo pulse, sorry. Well, nothing crazy at the start here. Just going to have some double soak rotations. Blaze Urel in the top. Probius will be doing ro double soak rotations, actually. And I, didn't, I didn't think they'd want to do a uh, Probius into Urel. That might have been a bit of a struggle right there. First Punisher, of course, is going to be Frozen Punisher. Probius started out this camp. It looks like he'll back away. Cassia focusing onto the left side Impalers. Probius just going to go start clearing things out in mid lane. And it's a very easy, very simple start to this map number one. No explosive dives or fights. Nothing too flashy. Just camp rotations, wave clear. Waiting for that first objective announcement coming up in still about a minute and some change. Dolphins identify each other by noises. Their file dolphins have names. Where, where were these facts yesterday? Yesterday I literally wanted animal facts while we were playing uh, Demon Souls. Which I am enjoying Demon Souls, but I'm also I've got I've got gripes with it. I've got some gripes with Demon Souls, but I am having fun. It's just like hour five of Demon Souls is like, ugh. Especially after that mind flare part. Uh, the mind flare part was just like such a such a such a tedious area. Sven. Able to back away. Pylon's not creating terrain. Urel jumps in, but that Blaze has already got a jet propulsion away. One fan of knives. Hits the heels of Blaze as Decker Kane starts working in a camp. This will take about 30,000 years. As Decker Kane bonks are currently dealing 77 damage. A study was done that indicates that some roller coaster rides can help dislodge kidney stones, specifically ones with twists and turns, but don't uh but don't generate too much G-force. It was discovered by Discovered a big Thunder Mountain at Disney World. Interesting. Did you know that uh, Splash Mountain at uh, Disney World, the topography or the range of mountains for that was inspired by uh, the range of mountains over at, well, it used to be called Squaw Valley. Now it's called Palisades in the north side of Lake Tahoe. Uh, Squaw Valley is where the Olympics were. Many, 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 many. The Winter Olympics uh, in the 70s, I think it was. 
and uh, Walt Disney was one of the lead designers for that. And when he was being taken around the mountain, he saw the mountain range, specifically one of the mountains towards the north side of the area, I guess you could say. And he was in love with the, the design of it, so he took that and used it for Splash Mountain. There you go. Also, if you didn't know, Walt Disney helped design some Olympics stuff. <laughs> Anyways, Frozen Punisher going into bottom lane over to the side of Crankle Crew, who are going to burn down Brightwing. Decker Kane is going to throw her Roger. I'm Blaze is not on the right side of the map, but I don't think they care too much about taking down Blaze. They want to siege here through bottom. Orky. He's a little low, but Deviant's got the, the healing potions needed, and that is going to be Diablo going down first to Tychus. I really got to say, this Tychus grab in the draft was not a bad call whatsoever. Now, Brightwing will be able to trade into Urel for this engagement. One for one. A slow on to Sven. Savannah Knives will not be enough, and it's going to be the crew, excuse me, Adventure Script by Hopaka able to come out on top of this with a double kill, only losing the Urel. But the fort does go down, and I think you're probably okay with that. Meanwhile, Probius in top lane is doing Probius things. Pushing up and taking down a structure to trade. So while we wait for tens to pop up, let's go ahead and cycle through the other numbers. See what they look like here. Camps to be grabbed. Yeah, we're just waiting for the experience to trickle in, but... Traded structures on opposing sides of the map. The next objective phase will be where? Jahano will be a little too late to invade this camp, but Blaze comes through with a heck load, or excuse me, Tigus comes through with a heck load of damage. Lightning Breath from Diablo, cooking up a Tychus. Cassia gets that kill. Probius with his null gate right there, slowing down some enemies. Crankle trying to back away and does not manage to get behind the gate in time. The heroics coming through ever so slightly faster to the adventure scripted by Hopaka, and they immediately snap the picks and find utility as a stay while well, unless it is polymorphed away 10 second cooldown on that one containment disc on to our Cassia but she's fine for the time being Diablo's full on souls so what do we got for heroics I mentioned the null gate we got bunker ball lightning lightning breath and blink heal on the opposing side containment disc ardent defender stay while well listen bless shield and got our Odin Little fan and eyes under the fort front gate. Our next Punisher is going to be Arcane in the top lane. Oh, well, Blaze just hit with a shield glare. No big deal. Just a little dismount. 15 seconds on the only heroic down. Lightning breath. Right wing's got one charge of her blink heal, just using the other there for a second. But it's a low cooldown at uh, nine seconds per charge. What's the game plan here from these two teams? Like, Crankle Crew, they're down in experience by... How much actually here? About a 3k difference. Let's see, Heroic Kill, a little bit from Mercenaries, a little bit from Minions, a little bit from Passive, a little bit from Structures, and it all adds up in the end. But, without, thir like, down... I, I like this call right here. Like, it's not 13 talent yet. Big stay while and listen. Ren trying to back away. The Brightwing blinks to a minion. Marl getting low. That's a double kill for Probius. As Diablo Fire Stomp does come out, I think he may be taken down. No, Crankle's picked off. They're still chasing down a, uh, the whole Paka right now. And Deviant. Actually, I don't think they're chasing down. I think they're just trying to disengage. Urel tries to Avenging Wrath away. Diablo closes the distance with a Shadow Charge. Throws the Fire Stomp back. Gets a couple heals here and there from this Brightwing. Null gate from Probius onto Porky, and he is slowed to molasses. That is going to be Urel going down. Four kills picked up really quickly by Adventure Scripted by Hopaka. We want to shut down Crankle Crew in this first map of this best of three series. Umbro Bind to pull back to Cassia. I believe Splash Mountain was the ride where my brother famously said, I came here to have fun, not go on rides. Wait, what? <laughs> I 
I remember doing, um, I remember going on the, um, there was that, like, that, ha the haunted hotel where they, like, they drop the elevator, or, like, the levels drop on you or whatever. Someone in chat knows what I'm talking about. I'm describing it very bad. It's not the de demon, because demon drop was the thing at, at Cedar Point, which was kind of like a smaller version of the thing at, uh, Disney World, which was, like, it was, like, a whole, like, you'd, like, go to a level, and then there'd be, like, projector, like, some sort of, like, ghosts or ghouls, and then you drop another level or whatever. Tower of Terror, thank you, thank you, yes, Tower of Terror, that's exactly it. Bless shield into Cassia, immediate damage onto Cassia, as she activates the ball lightning, and Decker Kane's like, cool, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and just do stay well and listen, you're still dead. All right, pick onto Cassia, but Blaze will finish out the objective, which is going straight to the keep in top lane. Tychus is heading his way over there to clear that out. Fight in bottom lane, though, is seemingly breaking out. Decker Kane did just hearth out as well. And it seems like with Cassia dead, Blaze will soak mid, the rest of the team handling bottom, and Punisher will get some value in top. Haunted Mansion. I think that was a movie, right? Haunted Mansion was the movie. Containment disc onto Diablo. Stop for a moment. Jet propulsion into the Jahan as we have a uh, Mayab trying to just get uh, out of this engagement or at least get into a safe side of this. Some potions from Decker Kane around. Punisher has been cleared away. We'll check on its value after we see what happens here. Ancient Blessings from Decker Kane activated. The bunker comes down from Blaze. He's taking a handful of damage, getting a little bit low. We do have Jahana trying to back away. The ball lightning from Cassia split by her. Crankle with 500 something HP. Nice little root from our Decker Kane to create some space, and Brightwing's the one to go down. Stay well and listen, catches the heels of two, and they're gonna look to try and maybe make the trade happen, but it's just not working out. Uh oh, wait a second. Yeah, this is not really going the way of Crankle Crew. It was looking like it was looking kind of positive after that Brightwing kill, but then too many low health bars that were capitalized on. Oh, uh, Porky, I think is still dead. Yeah, I think Porky's still dead. Body blocks from Hopaka. Imagine getting body blocked by a Probius. Awkward. I'm with your brother. I don't ride coasters at parks. Why then why go? I'm confused. Well, I guess I guess actually that's not that's not that's not a right statement for me. Cuz like I would always go to Cedar Point, which which is like we would just basically go to all the roller coasters. But there are other things to do at Cedar Point outside of roller coasters. So I see what you mean. Because for a second I was like, there's nothing else to do with the parks. I'm like, no, there is. Like, Cedar Point's got arcades and gentle rides and water park and... So yeah, I see what you mean. But I'm a ro I love roller coasters, personally. I absolutely love. Especially, like, like things like the Millennium Force. Oh, man. Such It's just such a good roller coaster. Uh-oh. Can phase shift from Brightwing come through? Yes, it will. It does have the peekaboo value for that extra shielding at level 7 as well. No Diablo death. Our next Punisher, by the way, will be Mortar in the bottom lane, and I think we're pretty close to the announcement on that. Hey, Kalavath, what's up, bud? Obi-san as well. Sorry if I missed anyone in chat. My apologies. I went to Florida a couple years ago, and it was fun riding the attractions at Universal and Disney. I did, uh, I've never done the Florida location, but I did the one in California for, uh, Universal. And the, uh, the Harry Potter ride is, like, the coolest one there. If you want to break your spine, there's the Mummy ride, which, like, that one, that one, that one's a bit rough. The Mummy ride's a bit rough. I don't know, it's fun though. And so we have our Punisher, as I mentioned. Camp's pushing in through mid and bottom. Double Impaler Camp mid, but it's kind of thinned out here. Probius pushes up bottom lane, and as I mentioned, that Mortar Punisher coming up. 20 talents here on the left hand side. We got Diablo, Hellgate. We have the infinite Null Gate for Probius. And what does that mean, chat? It means that if the, if the Null Gate is within the power field of a pylon, it will never, it will never go away. Does this show? Okay, it doesn't show. 
was wondering if we went under Propia's vision, would it uh would it show the range of these 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 towers? But I think it's it's radius is pretty decent. So maybe oh wait, hold on. They're looking for Diablo. They find the containment disc onto him. Blaze around the objective. He's got 36 in rising skeletal defenders. This is looking promising for the Probius team. Mortar Punisher could be a game-winning push right here, 14 minutes in. Cedar Point is a multiple time a year thing with my daughter and I. It, it, for my, it was, it was like, it was the father and son thing for my dad and I. Every summer, him and I would 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 go. Also, they had his like company picnic, not his company, but the company he worked for. So we get like discount tickets, a free dinner, and we make a father son day out of it. Ball lightning from Cassia bouncing around here. Punisher still pushing in. Jumps over to the Tychus as he's able to dash away. Odin down for the next 70 seconds. Diablo comes in with the Shadow Charge. The Jet Propulsion trying to find the stun, but it doesn't connect. The Stay Well and Listen is zoned back. The enemies as a Bless Shield from Johanna does connect onto a few. Lightning Breath up in 13 seconds. The bottom lane keep has gone down. Punisher eaten by an Iron Skin of Johanna. Are they able to start ending here? Punisher pulled to mid, thinking for a second, and kind of stuck around this keep. Doesn't look like the core shielding is really moving down too fast, but Blaze and friends are still committed to this push. 20 talent to your advantage. Wait a second, Diablo goes in with the Shadow Charge. There's a Null Gate onto Crankle, and that Null Gate ain't going anywhere. It's with, it's powered by a pylon. Got a containment disc onto Cassia. As the big splash stun onto Porky does connect. Probius gets the snipe, no, Brightwing gets the snipe onto her. Cassia, er, bah. Cassia fighting Decker Kane. We got Urel going down as well. And it is a game winning push through bottom lane 15 minutes in. The Probius bounty has been claimed by the side of adventures scripted by Hopaka. And the core will go down with Sven as well. And we wrap up map number one with a. Finland! Magnum XL200 was my first roller coaster when you were five. Oh my god. My first roller coaster at Cedar Point was the Blue Streak. Then we did the Mantis. Then we went to the Raptor. Uh, Because I was afraid of the Raptor at first. And then we did the Mantis. Then I was like, well, if the Mantis is that fun, the Raptor has to be more fun. And then we did the Magnum. And then uh, I believe that was the year the Millennium Force was, uh, yeah, that was the year the Millennium Force was released. So after we did the Magnum, we then stood in line for the rest of our time uh, for the Millennium Force. Oh, actually, no, uh, as we were leaving the park, we hit the Raptor on the way out. Because there was no line at the Raptor and we were all like, oh, we hit the Millennium Force once, we're done. Granted, we stood in line for the Millennium Force for like five hours. Welcome everybody into Tomb of the Spider Queen, map number two in this best of three series here in the semifinals of Murky Cup Qualifier 6. Single elimination bracket, the 10 heroes we previously saw in the last map are unavailable for this future map in Tomb of the Spider Queen. If we head to a map three, that'll mean that there are 20 heroes unavailable. Of course, there's bands at the top of the screen, but those don't add to the list as you all know. But sometimes we get new viewers in here, which I encourage you to hit the follow button because it costs you $0. You can get some channel points you can spend away on the Twitch gambles we have for every single map. And otherwise, thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. And I hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday. And if you can or would like to, be sure to subscribe or if you'd like to support the stream, every little bit's appreciated. We are doing crowd control Baha Rastamar, which means you can use bits to change the painting. We'll have a menu of different things for different sections of the painting so i like you won't be able to put a tree in at the beginning of the painting well we'll save that for later in the painting because you know we, we have to we have to still kind of we still have to make it look okay so i have we have like three sections of different things you can do i've got a bunch of different ideas i'm gonna think of some more after stream today but uh it'll be exciting it'll be exciting i think i'll throw the uh if, and if people are curious, I'll throw the painting I want to do in Discord. So if you want to take a look at it ahead of time, and maybe if you want to do some planning, or if you want to be like, ah, yes, I see that there's this, so I want to add in that, you can definitely do that. We got ourselves a Garrosh Vala. I know I'm, I'm keeping it ambiguous, but you know, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun day tomorrow. Be sure to come by the stream. And we do have a uh, Corsair giveaway today, X Commission giveaway. 
Sylvanas Hammer on the right hand side, band away, Garrosh and Vala, Hanzo first picked by the crew of Crankles. So what are we gonna get here for Tomb of the Spider Queen on Adventure Scripted by Hopaka? What is their priority pick at the beginning? Yorel and Blaze have already been played. Leoric is up and available if they want to grab him early for the solo lane. Ooh, Muradin and Mephisto. Okay, all right. Uh, Alex Straza could be a uh, healer pickup for the side of Adventure Scripted by Hopaka. Regeneration Globes for Mephisto. Even if he doesn't go into Hysteria, the Regeneration Globes for Spite is really, really good. Gamble. The Gamble's not active yet. Gamble's not active yet. Did I say Gamble? My bad. Stitches? Are they going to pick up the Alexstrasza here? For Because that is a combination. No, they got Malfurion. They might they might have done Stitches Alexstrasza already. That's a not too uncommon of a bounty to have claimed. Let me go ahead and try and get the bounty list here. Uh, full bounties. Let's see. Adventure scripted by Hopaka. They have not done... They have not done Stitches with Alexstrasza. Crankle Crew has... Let's see what we get here. Ban. Mid phase. What do we got? Leoric is out of here. All right. Got 12 eligible users for the uh, giveaway. Nice. That, that seems about right. Oh, right. Ban, 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 ban. I don't know if they're afraid of the Alexstrasza with the Mephisto. I don't know if they would try. Oh, they are. They are going to get rid of that. Okay. All right. Hey, I, like, it, it is strong, so. But I feel like, I feel like Adventure Scripted by Whole Pocket had to have known that that Alex Strauss was going to get banned away. Like, I, 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 I feel like it was not Telegraph, but, like, taking Mephisto here, it's like, hmm, Alex Strauss is not a nice synergy. Granted, Ana could be picked up here. Yeehaw! Yeehaw, everybody. Just yeehaw. I'm a happy camper. I got I got nothing else to say. I'm just gonna sit here and be smug and be happy we got ourselves a Cho flipping gall. So I feel like the Mephisto Muradin was an absolutely outstanding bait, because I don't think they wanted Alexstrasza whatsoever, but they wanted to draft it to be like, ooh, we're gonna have this, like, we're gonna have all this, uh, value from Mephisto, but it was like, no. No, we were going for the Cho'Gal the entire time. Here's the big question. What are they gonna take here for the healer? Is it gonna be Ariel? Okay, they are gonna go Ariel. It's an old Cho'Gal setup, but it counts. It is. It is. Shake that Chogal booty. Uh, all right. This is the one time where I'm like, yeah, take Burn the Impure. I, t I typically like a bruiser over a tank. Oh, Murden can solo lane, I think, just fine. I think Murden would be fine in the solo lane. Who knows? Who knows what the setup's gonna be? I mean, we, we could see a 1-4 uh, instead of the 4-1. There's definitely some uh, opportunities here, but let's go ahead and get into map number two. The Twitch prediction's up and available, as Ash Mantle has lovingly told you all. We got Cho'Gal played by Hopaka and Mai. We're looking at Ren on your Ariel. Down for Liv is your Mephisto, and Bish is going to be your Murden. Right side of the map is Crankle Crew. We got a Porky Stitches. Sven on Sonya, excuse me. Deviant Malfurion, Marl Karks is your Hanzo, and Crankle Imperius. 
Redemption Hanzo patchwork creation. Oh, sorry. Hungry for more on stitches. Searing lights, unyielding power, dwarf toss, callous hide. There's the ICU. I wonder if we'll actually get a Haymaker Murad in here. Possibly to counteract the uh, Gorge of Stitches and the Dive of Imperius and Sonya. Little Space Creator. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Ooh, that's a good detainment strike. Crankle going down. First Blood over the left-hand side. I think Jogal's a better solo than Murdin. Yeah, I would absolutely agree. I think Muradin can do it. He's gonna struggle, but yeah, Chogol will definitely have more wave clearer tools. Maybe later they'll swap. Like maybe when like Muradin gets like Bronzebeard Rage at 13 or something, maybe they'll swap him out. Because then Bronzebeard Rage gives you really good wave clear. Could go Sledgehammer level four as well for the extra cooldown reduction. But then you're giving up reverberation for the cooldown for the 5%. Granted, if you're going into Haymaker, Haymaker's a really low cooldown, so 5% of, like, 30 seconds is... I, I mean, still is cooldown. I mean, there, there's still value, but we'll see. We'll see as things unfold. I'm, I'm very interested in this game. We got a really good draft. We got some great... Great players here, and we'll see if this can be a series that goes the distance, or if this will be a 2-0 favorite inside of Adventure Scripted by Hopaka moving into the Grand Finals later on today. Still jumping out here. Chogal rotating up to mid. A little runic bomb thrown in here and there. Poking onto the enemies. Eight regeneration globes already for Porky. As a reminder, every 20 he grabs, he gets 5% movement speed increase. From picking the talent, he gets 5 already. So at the 20 mark, he'll have 10%. While I'm mounted, Hook goes out looking for Chogal. No one found at the end of that chain. We got the playtime for Stitches. We got Ignore All Distractions for Hanzo, which gives him like an 8.5 range when he hits a minion. Spite Mephisto makes sense at level 4. Repeated Offense as well. There's the Reverberation for Muradin. So he's going to get 5% Heroic Ability cooldown. Natural Agility from Marl here. Won't be picked off. Muradin moves into top lane, but sees the Imperius and decides better of it just to kind of chill. And Hanzo will pick up a couple more stacks here off of uh, Muradin in top. Down in bottom lane, though. Porky caught between Shogal and Ariel. Detainment Strike looking for a second stack. Won't find anything. The eye was put out. Immediately cleared away by Porky. Crankle looking to maybe dive in. He did go into the bottle, the battle hunger as well. Increased the healing for Valorous Brand by 80%. So trait build Imperius currently. Uh, Gaul can still attack Engorged. Uh, I actually do not know. Like, I know in, like when he's in the Dragonite, he can still do all of his abilities and stuff. I actually don't know the answer to that. I don't know if anyone in chat does, but I would venture a guess no. But then again, it is Heroes of the Storm, and there's a lot of weird things. Like Hogger spinning through Maze Ice Wall. Fifty-two stacks for our adventure scripted by Hopaka. Seven talents here, almost here on both sides. Marl's got full stacks on redemption, which means the auto attacks are going to be coming out fifty percent faster. Does go to the never outmatch, reduce the scatter arrow mana cost by fifty to thirty, and basic attacks against enemy heroes lower the cooldown by scatter of three seconds. So, makes sense when you're going to be going into the faster auto attacks. I was thinking it was going to be sharpened arrowheads at level seven for the armor reduction, but I guess that's not going to be the priority. Wants more scatter value. Flash of Anger is going to be your level 7 for your Imperius, which will be the consuming a mark of Celest uh, from Celestial Charge deals 197 damage to the target and nearby enemies uh, and grants Imperius 329 points of shield for 4 seconds. More sustain for him. You know, that's a lot of damage onto this Mephisto. They're going to try and run him down. Sony with the spin, a slam. One more slam might be enough, but no. The healing from Ariel's enough. Crankle gets... Is, is out of position and gets taken down by Gull right there. Can also, uh... 
You can also spin through Tassadar Well and Entomb. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. The Entomb makes sense. A zombie wall as well. But I feel like you should bounce off of Maze Ice Wall and you should bounce off of For Tassadar Force Wall. But, like, the Entomb makes sense because, like, could you imagine Hogger, you Entomb Hogger, he starts to spin and you're the one who dies? <laughs> A lot of bounces available in, in that Entomb right there. But either way, Mephisto jumps in. Bit of damage onto Crankle here. Red Web Weavers have descended to the, from the side of Crankle Crew. A Stormbolt from Murden. A hook goes out once again. Porky can't find anyone at the end of this uh, chain. Not struggling, but just not having good connections here. Yeah, I discovered the Hogger bouncing, uh, spinning through Maze Ice Wall literally last qualifier we had. It was it was uh, qualifier number five this past Wednesday that we saw that. All right, well, we got Heroics here on the right-hand side. Dragon's Arrow, Tranquility, Wrath of Injurious, Gorge, and the Wrath of Berserker. On the left-hand side, it is going to be your Crystal Aegis with a Durance of Hate, Haymaker, Twilight Hammer, and Twisting Nether. As the Haymaker pushes Crankle away, Porky's Gorge, or Porky Gorge's Cho'Gall. Twisting Nether will be activated afterwards. Load the Tame Strike to push back the enemy. Celestial Charge from Imperius, but the shove from Gaul allows Cho to start backing away. The Wrath of Ingeers interrupted by the Twilight Hammer. We currently have the Tranquility from Elphir and activated. Bish getting low on Murden does go down. Mephisto picked off as well. Sonya spinning through the health bar of some of these enemies, but the Detainment Strike into the wall. This Ariel will be picked off. Crystal Lagos wasn't allowed to be used as 63 gems. No! Not like this. The gems are lost. The economy is shattered. And the recession has begun for the members of Adventure Scripted by Hopaka. Or if you draft Leo and Hogger together. That is true. Yeah, that's a good point, Stark. Yeah, you could actually use it against the enemy, too. You purposefully entomb your hogger and just have him start bouncing around, yeah. It was a conscious decision to remove any ways to abuse him further. Walls are very, very, uh, so, so case. Diablo, Ario, Lucio. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, Diablo, Ario can stun into a zombie wall, but not Lucio wall right on it. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. No, I definitely think it's a conscious decision, but it's just, it's just kind of funny when you think about it. Like, you would think that he can do it. But yeah, no, I think they have an absolute... I don't think it was, like, accidental. It's like, oh, yeah. Whoops, I guess we didn't code Hogger right. Like, I don't think Kyle Dates messed that up. But it's just one of those things to kind of, like, giggle about. Because it's like, Diablo can Shadow Charge into a Force Wall. But Hogger can't bounce off of it. Or Lucio can't Wall Ride on it. But Ariel can detain and strike into it, yeah, so. Anyways, Haymaker from Murden pushes Porky out of position. He's gonna gorge onto the Ariel immediately. We have the Twilight Hammer keeping Porky out of uh, friendly reach, and he does go down. Mephisto done with his level one, the Chogol composition, starting to build some momentum here after losing so many gems. Crankle should be picked off. Bish will hopefully not be traded. And Chogol getting low. Oh, I can't believe it, what? No way. And and Muradin gets out of this alive as well? Uh, I think the Mephisto's dead. No? Bottom four, bottom keep does go down, but I can't believe it. That was like three heroes that should have died. Muradin, Mephisto, and Shogal. Technically four should have died there in that engagement. Ragnaros dies to Pyroblast and becomes... Unattached the floor when he flies, so as many. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, huh? I didn't think about that one. <laughs> Stitches should be able to pull himself away from danger, Kira style. Nah, I just I don't think the chain's strong enough to pull him. <laughs> 
Stitch has got a little too much junk in the trunk, and uh, that's the reason why he can't use a, a hook to pull himself to safety. <laughs> the chain just, just snaps under the strain. All right, sorry, my apologies. Booty jokes aside, let's go ahead and continue to see what's gonna happen here in top lane, because the side of Cranko Crew, they don't want to be eliminated from Qualifier 6. They want to continue this game, this series, and if they, this red squad, if they can take this map, it'll be a, it'll basically be down to a best of one for who goes to the grand finals later on today. Toss in for Muradin, looking for the body blocks. That's a really good Twisting Nether. Crystal Aegis onto the Cho'Gall. Twisting Nether does have a slow for the enemies stuck inside. Gorge onto, I believe that was the Mephisto right there. He'll be slammed to death. We do have a trade though, Imperius being picked off. Uh-oh, Cho'Gall getting low. Keep does go down. Hanzo picked off, but Muradin shall be traded. It's two for two trade. Wrath Berserker activated. And it's Crankle Crew, they're running it down and they managed to run down Shogal's health bar. A lone Ariel to defend, but I don't think she'll be able to do much here. Boss at round 40%. Oh, goodbye. No, yes, Moonfire. Finland. A double wipe, a double wipe. Call it cotton now. Crankle Crew is gonna take us to a map number three. GG, well played. That was fun. Sad the Cho'Gall composition didn't win. Happy we get more games. You know, it's a little bittersweet. Uh, choose outcome. Which team wins to Spider Queen? Crankle Crew. That was an entertaining match. That's what I. That's what I like to see. Te U Best. All right. Adventures that have been scripted by Holpaka will be on the left hand side of Dragonshire as we get into Crankle Crew on the right. Map number three in this best three series, and we are going to be seeing. Winner of the series goes to the grand finals. Loser takes uh, third, fourth place, and third, fourth place is worth five points. Uh, when we're getting ready for the next best of three, we can check out uh, the standings. We can check out the standings a little bit later. Let's see, we have 16 eligible users for the giveaway. Uh, you are allowed to spam the uh, the entry word. It should. I don't. I don't think. I didn't turn on the thing. Did I? No. I do not have anti-spam enabled. So you can spam the word. It will not un. Uh, it will not uncheck you or whatever. You what about BTTV? There's a setting where you can turn on seven TV emotes through BTTV. Since we just. I just added in one. I just added in the uh, adage. Add one of eighty. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right, so Garage Vala, we've got a Sylvanas Junkrat. First pick on the right. As a reminder, there are 20 heroes unavailable, the ones that were played. And, of course, you have the bands at the top of the screen. Lucio in the house. Also, Vita, good morning. Good to see you, bud. Hope you're having a good Saturday. Hopefully, you're enjoying the WoW expansion, if that's your jam. If not, whatever. Nubarak first pick. Do they want to dive buddy with this immediately? Could pick up an early Lee Ming or Grey Main. Also, really realistically, you're grabbing the Lee Ming so you can deny the cocoon clear value, but I guess they want the Dahaka early on. Dahaka for more CC and also the global to get into bottom lane or wherever. Whatever team fight you end up with. Uh Lucio, so potential high mobility composition. Muradin's been played, Johanna's been played, Anubrex picked, I believe Diablo's been played, so tank-wise. I wouldn't mind an Arthas here. Arthas wouldn't be too bad. But they're gonna hold off on the main tank for the time being. And we'll have a Tracer Rexar. So I do like the Rexar for the solo. 
Is 7 TV what people are uh, people are using for even more emotes? Uh, I mean, it's just like it's like the same thing as BT TV, I think, realistically. Like BT TV came out, and then 7 TV, TV, and then and then Frankers, and then like it's just it's just another one of those emote websites, basically. Now Gan is banned away, so getting rid of the Dreadlord right there. The undead man will not make it into this. Uh, do we see a healer priority ban? What's the what's what's the what's the direction Cranky Crew wants to ban away? What do they not want to deal with? Oh, it's early. Get rid of Sergeant Hammer. They made us a tank. Uh, I mean, the sustained damage is pretty good. They've got good control around the hammer with the Anubarak and such. Dahak obviously will be in the solo lane, but uh, Anubarak would be able to kind of impale and burrow charge and zone people. A hammer just rains in shells. Oh, Cassia was Cassia. Cassia was played in this best of three, I think. So I don't think they can go for her for a blind. Rhaegar Genji. Okay. What do I want to wrap up this draft with? Can't do Cho'Gall. May's available. Arthas is available. Hmm. I, I do still kind of like the Arthas. It gives them some CC. Gives them that auto attack speed reduction. Cinder Ghost is a good siege tool. Material and Orphea make their way into this. Okay. Every time I see an Orphea in a game, I, I message Big Scary Duck in hopes that he gets to see it. Your chat is just plain text spam? Yeah, you have to turn on the settings or whatever it is and or download an extension or, yeah. I just mostly use BTTV. Chromie rounds this out, okay. Um... I think the Tyrael can be okay. The Orphea I'm a little worried about. I feel like the Orphea is going to get just bursted and dove and blown up. So, hey, let's see what happens. I'll go ahead and uh, roll us out a uh, Twitch prediction. What's up, Ace? All right, letting the, letting the stream catch up a little bit because we do have a uh, delay since we are live games. So just trying to get the gamble going a little bit later so you all can see some of the first engagements and level ones and all that good stuff. But here we go, map number one, uh, or map number three of the day. Sorry about this. Map number three in our second best of three on the left-hand side. It's Adventure Scripted by Hopaka. My Dahaka, Hopaka playing your Genji. Bish will be your Anubarak. We've got a Ren, Rhaegar, and AFK in the Hall of Storms. We've got Down for Live. Can no one get this man a beverage? Right side of the map. Crankle Crew. We got a Porky, Rexar, Marl on Orphea. Crankle Imperius. Or not Imperius, sorry, different Five, angel. Tyrael, Sven, three, Tracer, and Deviant will be two, your Lucio. Of course, Misha, one. played by Misha. Unleash you got our Bird of Prey, one. Justice for All, Parting Gifts. We'll probably see a bunch of blinks in. Parting Gift activated immediately just to get that 7%. There's the recall. Tracer got 27%. Wow, nicely done. Drag from Dahak onto Tyrael, and Pale from Anubrak onto a few as well. Chromie level 1 is going to be, once again, the first time, building those Sandblast stacks, so... No deep breathing. Misha gets sacrificed. Someone report Porky. Tissue regeneration for our Dahakas. He does brush stock in from the Hall of Storms. I think he did Hearth out, so he's just looking to get back in here. Lucio with a sound wave interrupts the drag, and that'll be the end of the first little engagement. Misha the only thing to be taken down. Legion of Beetles for our Nubarak. We've got the Totem upgrade with the Colossal Totem. And Genji with the Agile Dismount. Pale thrown back. There's a pulse bomb onto Hopaka. Looks like he'll be fine to swift strike away. Marl, though, chasing in. Orphe with some chomps. The Shadow Waltzes are allowing Orphe to have some dashes. And the healing from Lucio is going to be just enough, but not enough for Sven. It is. Oh, Chromie auto attack is enough. 
and they can't take a, they can't find a second kill on the side of adventure scripted by Hopaka. Hoping for Animal Hundred Husbandry for Rexar. I am I would be willing to bet a sub that he will not take it. Capture the shots. Inherit the Dragon Knight's power and lay waste to this forsaken kingdom. Misha thrown onto the point. Be able to channel that for the time being. We've got bottom Moonshrine not held, but actually Sven's gonna go down there. Available Dragonite in mid, Orphea working on the camp on the right. As the new Brack and Dahaka are, they're being forced out of top lane by a gigantic bear. Oh, wait, bottom lane, Tracer, Pulse Bomb. Doesn't take down the Chromie, forces her back. Trading quite a bit of health there, Genji. Oh, he goes in for it, gets the swift strike reset, a second kill over to the side of Adventure Scripted by Hopaka. Breck, he gets the Dragonite? Wow, I was not expecting that. I thought there'd be an interrupt in time, but not the case. Not only do they get two kills, they pick up a two minute Dragonite. It's very early on. It's not the strongest lad in the world. It's got 9K HP dealing 396 damage into structures. Decent structure damage, but um, oh, my apologies. Genji is gonna be able to find the kill into Rexar in top lane. And Crankle is gonna be fine for the time being. Oh wait, hold on Lucio. Hit with a purge from Rhaegar. There's a little animation over Lucio's head, but Looks like our Chromie can't find the last little bit of damage. Take him down. This is a really good, this is a really rough Tracer game. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Speaking of. Miss. I don't think I've seen a competitive game with Animal Husbandry in a long time. I don't think I've seen Animal Husbandry picked at all in a long time. Aka landing the drag on Namisha. Pops some essence right now. Tissue regeneration level one. Hero stalker level four. Feeding frenzy level seven. Augmented guard for our uh, Genji at level seven as well. The beetles continue with leeching scarabs. Oh. Mind devour for Orpheo. Sven. Fleck activated from Hopaka. Swift strikes away. We'll be seeing taking flight for our Rexar. Did go into the Hunter Gatherer at level four. Orphea in top lane, looking to pressure onto this Tahaka, but won't be able to take him down. Chromie, of course, because she gets her talents two levels early. She'll have Temporal Loop already ready to go. We'll see if she applies that to anyone anytime soon. Tracer Pulse Bomb is fully charged. Tracer's about to step into a bush, get maybe hit with a time stop. She's literally right on top of it. Massive blinks away immediately. Burrow charging from a new brack. Kolpaka looking to jump in. Temporal loop on to Deviant. Lucio wall riding around gets chunked down to 10%. And he'll be taken out completely. Nicely done from Chromie. Finding a fifth kill of the game. And this is adventure scripted by Hopaka. They were having fun in maps one and two, and now they're they're all business in map three. This is business time. For our blue squad, as Marl's gonna be going down as well. Crankle taps the well. Sven's super duper low. Dahaka burrows, no lurker strain, but a snipe from Chromie finds the tracer. Tyrael with the Aldruin's might out. Bish getting a little bit low on this Anubarak. Dahaka able to back away. Misha maybe have a charge for a stun onto him. Nope, lands the drag immediately. They'll be able to take down the bear. No, I thought Rhaegar was gonna lunge in for a bite onto the face, but no mauling to be had here. This will be 10 talent tiers coming through soon. We'll take a look at some of those other questing talents later on, because right now, this is Adventure Scripted by Hopaka with a commanding one and a quarter lead against the side of Crankle Crew. Cocoon, Isolation, Ancestra Healing, and Dragon Blade? X-Strike? I mean, it's usually X-Strike, but Dragon Blade does come up every so often. Looks like our Genji will hold for the time being as the numbers continue through the bottom of your screen. A new brag, body blocks, Porky. Got pork sliders for lunch today. 
Not really, but you know what I mean. Uh, extract from the Genji was picked up, obviously. That's what you saw I used to uh, take him down. Ten talents on the right side will soon be picked up, and we can talk about those. Until then, it's just aggression, aggressive positioning. Look at this a new Brack flank. He even sees the Tyrion. He's like, I don't care. I'm coming in for this. We could under Lucio. We're gonna try and break him out quickly, but unfortunately, it's not quick enough. And Orphea does go down. Bish low gets the ancestor healing from Rhaegar, and the fight continues. Genji jumps in. Tracer able to roll away or walk away towards Well. Gets hit with one sandblast from Chromie. Or one Dragon Breath, if you will. Sandblast, currently at 38 of 40 for once again the first time. Nubrak, summoning some beetles, throwing back that Impale. Creating a little bit of space for him to channel, uninterrupted by the by the uh, minions. And Dahaka pops, pops, pops a full bar of Essence. And that is pretty much the red light to try and take him down. The new call from Crankle Crew is to go into mid and try and save as much as they can, but the mid lane fort does go down. Dragonite's heading towards top. Meanwhile, Tempora loop onto Orphean bottom lane. She's gonna be picked off, and Dahaka brush stocks in. Time stop onto two. They'll have a drag out of this immediately. Good high five from the Lucio denying that. Tracer chases down the Genji. Deflect, no, wait, what? Sven can't find the kill. Sven, he won't be taken down. We do have uh, Holy Ground activated by our uh, Material right there, the sanctification, sorry. Boris for Rexar, Pulse Bomb Tracer, Eternal Feast, Orphea, and the high five from Lucy, as we did see that saving earlier. Dragonite in top lane, and Nubrak still just hammering through this, or I guess he's axing this fort a lot of questions. A kick on to Tracer, she's displaced. This keep this fort will go down. And all three forts have been removed. Ten to one in kills. Genji able to swift strike away, Eternal Feast. Oh, the net, the cyber agility allows him to get out of that Eternal Feast. He'll get hit with a Dread right there. 11th stack for Orphe on the Mind Devourer. Camp being stolen away. Tracer does scout this, but it's going to be a little too late. Cocoon on to her, actually. Lucio and friends are around. It's 13 to 12. It's a talented advantage on the left-hand side, but no kill onto Lucio or Tracer after that Cocoon. Objective phase will be announced again very shortly. It's a very, very low cooldown. From when the Dragonite expires to when you have another Moon Sun Shrine activation. Of course, you still have the 30 second announcement time. So until then, it's rotate around the map, paint it blue, as all camps are going to be grabbed here. Yeah, it looks like all camps will be grabbed. Massive experience deficit. Almost a 10k difference between these two teams right here. And it's 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 looking rough. It's looking really rough for Crankle Crew. It's it's one of those situations you sit there and you ask yourself, how do we come back? What what can we do to even come back? Do we death ball and try and find like Dahak or so on his own? And then that that's not gonna work out. I, you can't team fight. Well, I guess you could team fight right now. You could maybe try and 4v5. You know, Dahaka shows on top. Rex Armisha join the team. He looked to dive onto a single target, but there's not enough CC to lock someone down. I mean, there's a lot of mobility, too. Genji mobility, Rhaegar mobility, Chromie, I mean, she's usually far enough away. And Anubrak to Hakka have ways of, of disengaging. Burrow from both of them. The Hakka with his brush stock as well. So it's, it's just, what's the lockdown tool here? Amisha charge, some boars. Uh, Lucio, Lucio with a... Push off. The Ancestral does not come through. That was the longest second of my life right there. But Crankle will be traded. See if he gets any death timer reduction. 28, 24. Eh, hey, yeah. So about four second death timer reduction right there. Opaka low. Ancestral healing self cast on the Rhaegar. Actually, the animation doesn't come through. And this, I was I was talking down about this draft from Crankle Crew. But in the corridor here, they find a couple kills and still down a talent it's still a level and a quarter deficit even after getting those the, like the two kills it still is a massive two level difference do you think judgment would have been a better call this game uh, like i don't know what's judgment cooldown 70 seconds i think this this 70 seconds um i don't know because the well i was gonna say you, there's a possibility of gapping your team but there's still like tracer can blink in or if you can dash in push off from lucio 
maybe judgment would have been good, but I feel like sanctification is a good is 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 also a fantastic tool to keep these team fights going and maybe find that turn turning moment. Greg Burrows to find the flank. Eldruin's might. The Holy Ground as well. There's an Eternal Feast. Lucio inside the cocoon immediately broken out. Sanctification coming down from the Tyrials. The boars will be unleashed by Rexar. At level 20, there is kill command, but you gotta get to level 20. Dahaka getting chunked. He burrows under the ground. No essence activated. Big extract from Genji takes down the bear. Nubrak burrows in, looking for the burrow charge. The impale does connect. The temporal loop onto Orphea. The drag as well. High five from Lucio. Genji jumps in with some shurikens here. There's so many low health bars on the right hand side, and a small high five from Lucio helps out that health bar of Crankle. And only Misha to be lost here, down a talent tier, is not bad whatsoever. But you're gonna lose Dragonite again. The Dragon Knight Just a question. Oh, you're always welcome to ask questions. We don't know everything here, but it's fun to discuss and. Have a little form about some things. Orphea's almost done. Actually, she finishes out her level 7 right there. The Eternal Feast activated. Gets two, three. Couple chomps actually coming through. But the deflect from Hopaka is going to deny some of that damage. The Dragonite still opening up mid lane. Someone's got to go deal with that. But the fight is uh, seemingly the most important thing for the members of Crankle Crew, Chromie Piercing Sand is gonna just start blasting through the enemies. Tracer gets in the back line, takes down the Chromie, but Genji, he's still getting wonderful value. Tyrael, can he get Death Timer cooldown? About four-ish seconds. But meanwhile, Dahaka on the Dragonite for Adventure Scripted by Hopaka is like, I'm just gonna go win the game. Y'all keep team fighting, I don't care. I'm just gonna go start smacking this core. Sven taken down. Wraps up this series here in a 2-1, favoring the side of Adventure Scripted by Hopaka. They're heading to the Grand Finals later on today, and Crankle Crew will take third, fourth place, five points for the standings. Alright, let's pay out the people. Adventure scripted by Hopaka. Uh, big payout to the Ash Believers. 